Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. So uh, we have the four and a half inch lift installed on the Jeep. As you can tell, it's a lot higher than it was before, but you can't just do springs and expect that you'll be good. No, no, no. So you have to upgrade different parts. That's why I have the Iron Rock A arm in the back right there. Adjustable control arms there. The long arms I have to install. There's a lot of things you need to ch uh, change out. But today we're gonna focus on the sway bar links for the rear. So uh, they just came in today and I need to change them out because... So right now I am running the stock sway bar link. With the stock sway bar link, it's actually hitting the coil bucket. So the sway bar is obviously not at the correct angle as is. You, you can tell it's pretty much straight up. Um, and every time I hit a bump, it bangs right there. I thought it was my shock making that noise, but it's actually the sway bar link I checked today. Luckily enough for us, these came in. So these are zone sway bar links. I'll link them down below in the description. They come without the bushing, so you have to assemble them, but I already did one just to try it out. Super easy, you don't even need a press. You just need some gloves so you don't get grease all over your hands and a grease gun and that's it. It goes in pretty easy, smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bushings on first and then uh, we'll put them on the Jeep itself. I'm gonna try to do it without taking the wheel off, but I honestly think I might have to. We'll see. In the box, you get the two sway bar links here, and you get a bag with all the, the bolts and stuff that you'll need. You get four bushings. I have one already installed, so that's what there's three here, and then three spacers as well. So the easiest way that I found to do this is, with one hand, I put some grease on there, and then put some on the rubber bushing. You don't need a lot, just enough. And this is also good too, so it doesn't squeak while it moves. You put one side in, you just press down on it, it's in there now. Take the sleeve. With the sleeves, you gotta be careful. There's two different holes, hole sizes. The one that's thicker goes on the top, and the one that's thinner goes on the bottom. So, just make sure you're aware about that. There's no up and down to the sway bar link. You just gotta make sure you know what bushing's going where. Those just slide in as well. So something to, to note in here, in the middle, it's actually smaller than it is on the outside. That's how it keeps these bushings in there nice and seated. They are two different sizes, you can tell there. So the bolts that Zone provides, it actually goes into a smaller hole here. That's the side that'll go on the sway bar itself. The bigger side is what goes on your body mount. Let's go ahead and remove the old sway bar links. 19 mil, I don't think this is the correct size, but it's the only thing I got that fits. And I'm also using a crescent wrench because the shock is in the way, so I can't use a socket. But these, since I already took them off, they're smooth, they come out easy. Um, for the top, I recommend letting it soak in PV Blaster, WD 40, something like that, some lubricant. Um, those usually are really, really on there. They can actually break, so just be careful with those. Take your time, don't try to force it out. Just um, slowly take it out. Make sure you put lubricant as you're taking it out and it should be fine. All right, so that's this one out. The nut is welded onto the back. So all you need is like a breaker bar from the front and take it out. Tighten the bolt a little first and then loosen it up. That way you don't strip it. Then once you tighten it, it'll just come out easy like that. Okay, so I got one of the straight bars out on this side. Um, unfortunately, over on this side, I ended up breaking a bolt. So, I'm gonna try to uh, remove that piece from the bolt. And if I can't, then I'm eventually gonna have to probably remake another mount or something, or drill that out and retap it. I'm not sure what would be easier. But um, yeah, I'm gonna take this mount off. But I'm gonna continue, put one side on just to hold the sway bar in place. Um, I don't think it'll affect anything really. So let's go ahead and put it on. Oh, and also I did um, remove the shock because it made it a little bit easier. So uh, just so you're aware, yeah, I would recommend removing the shock. But you don't have to remove the tire. If you have offset, you should be fine. So I did put some grease on the bolt. I'm gonna put back in, and like I said, uh, you have to use the side with the bigger hole at the top, and the side with the smaller hole is gonna have the bolt going through it. Yes. And with the bolt like this, you don't really wanna use an impact. Um, you're better off using hand tools. 
So we're gonna tighten this up and then tighten everything up to 30 foot pounds of torque. I'll do that once I have all the bolts in, so. And yes, it was a pain to remove, so be aware that <laughs> I have a lot of patience. And if you get a broken bolt, don't get mad, just figure it out. No reason to get mad. So now we are here, put the washer on. I'm putting the, the head of the bolt to this side. There we go. Bam. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten all that and we should be good after that. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to look like when you are done. Uh, and you see the sway bar is away from the cover bucket. It was actually hitting on the cover bucket. Now it's not, it has a lot of room now. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I have the other side messed up. So what I'll be doing is I'll be removing the mount um, that holds the sway bar. All right, so here's the culprit that broke. As you can tell, it was almost out. Oh well, it is what it is. I think I could probably take it out, but we'll see. All right, so we are at Chris's house <laughs> as he's running away. Um, so I got the nut that was broken off of the mount. What I did is it was sticking out a little bit on this side and we welded um, a nut onto that piece and we were able to back it out pretty easy. Yeah, so this is the only bolt that I can find in the proper size for this. Have this thing put on and yeah, we should be ready to go after that. And let me show you the reason why I'm changing it. Um, you can see right here where it was in the coil bucket. And that's because the links were too short. So these will do the job for the four and a half inch lift. Okay, so now we have the top mounted up. Just gonna put in the screw for the bottom. Make sure you put the wash on the end of both sides. Now we are done with the sway bar links on both sides. Uh, here you can see the new bolt that I put up on top. So now I actually won't bang anymore on the coil bucket down there. I still do need um, longer shocks for the rear because they are bottoming out when I, this is like the, as, as long as they go. So I need to pick up some new shocks for that, but we're pretty much done for the rear. All right guys, that's it for today's video. That is why you need to buy sway bar links that are extended for your lift. Um, I do not recommend running the stock ones. Your bushings are probably shot, mine were. So just get new sway bar links that are extended. They're not that expensive. For the front, I have disconnects coming in, so we just have to wait on those. But for now, I'm just running no front sway bar, only the rear. And for the next episode, since we did lift it more, we do have to adjust the track bar. So if you are lifting your Jeep, make sure you have an adjustable track bar. I would recommend to stay away from JKS. That's what I started with, and honestly, it's not that good. I would go with like Trail Forge or something different. Anyways, We'll be adjusting that soon too because the axle is off. That can cause death wobble, so just so you're aware, adjust your track bar. Anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.